evening to our Indian uh, colleagues and uh, good morning here from New York. And let's see, everybody can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Good morning. Oh, oh good, good. Uh, good morning. So I have Dr. Uh, Sri Nivas Rao and uh, Dr. Narasa Raju. Yes, yes. Hi. Both of you are there. Good, beautiful. So we'll get on to it. Uh, and uh, welcome from Mount Sinai Cat Lab. And uh, we is going to start a case uh, which is sponsored by our son Pharma. That's the case number 18 in our series of uh, uh, live cases from Mount Sinai. And if everything is okay, we will have a lot of discussion. So we'll start with the, uh, our case. Uh, these are myself and uh, Dr. Keeney. And of course, both of you, I'm so happy you to be a part of uh, today's webcast as a faculty and the moderator. Uh, and uh, as here, uh, Dr. Sri Navasarao Madure is the head department of cardiology and senior interventional cardiologist at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Very well accomplished, uh, multiple trials, great name. And uh, we have met quite, quite times uh, in our various meetings. So hello uh, to Dr. Rao. Uh, from uh, Mount Sinai, myself and Dr. Keeney. Uh, good morning. Good, good, good morning. And then Dr. Narasa Raju, Tall Party, is the director of the CAT Lab and uh, senior interventional cardiologist at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Uh, a very well accomplished, uh, I would call it a budding interventionist. And welcome to our uh, this month's uh, live case presentation. And then we'll have the case you'll be discussing with the trifurcation circumflex along with the uh, moderated discussion and interactive panel later. So with that note, the case number 18 is a 42-year-old male who presented with new onset angina class few months ago after CTA revealing multi-vessel soft plaques. High calcium score, but, but they called it the plaques were soft, non-calcified, three-vessel, and the uh, patient was no CAD before. Uh, has some hypertension, hyperlipidemia, excess smoker, positive family history. There was some question about aspirin allergy and SAQ. SAQ is basically is the representation of Canadian class kind of symptoms and any from 0 to 100 as you know, towards 100 is better minimal symptoms and 0 means very significant symptoms. Patient was on two medication, amlodipine and metoprolol and torvastatin and then was added presagrul 10 milligram because of aspirin allergy last time after the PCI. The cath which was done on February 25th revealed three vessel disease and uh, Anu is going to show that of the two were taken care and today patient is for the third vessel. So we uh, can go to yeah. the angiogram first. Show the angiogram. Yep. So this is the left system, left main is non-obstructive and circumflex uh, where we stented. The stand looks good, large uh, size LPL, small OMs, and this is uh, where we are today with uh, LAD. So prox LAD is okay, then you have mid LAD about moderate disease and uh, distal LAD which is actually after the two large, di I mean two diagonals that has taken origin, again 80-90%. Um, then you see tandem lesion, then there is a small gap and then you see which looks like a bridge but uh, the bridge is significant. D1 has a 1995 lesion and is about 2.2 size vessel. This is the LV gram which is normal and RC also where we did the stent looks fine. And look at this, I mean I'm surprised that they read a calcium, it was done outside. Uh, calcium 1001, once your calcium 1001 you definitely see heavy tram track calcium in the vessel. So my question is maybe it was supposed to be 101 mm -hmm. rather than 1001, right? Um, um, you agree with that? Because once you get 1000 calcium, it's a very high calcium uh, score. And even LED, they did read the plaques were soft. And that's exactly what we have. Non-calcific uh, plaques uh, in all three vessels. But uh, and syntax score was 22. And uh, uh, if, uh, if I had to just go back to slides again, so I present... And then we'll come back to the discussion how to tackle this case. So today is the now patient then uh, their question about allergy went to allergy specialist. They said no problem, give aspirin, desensitize, and patient got aspirin today. Uh, now we know that in the past we used to desensitize these patients quite a bit, but now since advent of uh, 
ticagrelor and prasagrel where aspirin can be eliminated. Remember those trials are being done whether minimal or short duration of aspirin uh, or maybe no aspirin uh, could be escort trials with the prasagrel and with the various trials of uh, uh, with the ticagrelor aspirin duration to be one month or even lower uh, with global freedom and twilight was three months. So key is that we did prasagul last time, but now they are given uh, 81 milligram, which is 75 equivalent uh, in India uh, from aspirin point of view. And now we plan going to uh, plan for multiple PCI lesions of the LED diagonal, and we'll come back to it and we'll take a discussion from everyone. Uh, and uh, we say that this one will be FFR guided because there is no physiological testing done. So just to update FFR in terms of we have been waiting quite a bit. The recent uh, uh, Jack uh, and AHA and ACC uh, and Sky all came with the guidelines of uh, our uh, coronary revascularization and uh, FFR has become class one. There used to be in European, but uh, uh, in United States were not there. I mean, now we have the class one indication of both and they put both FFR and IFR. They have not done the other resting parameters, RFRs and others, but both FFR and IFR, IFR because of various comparative trial has made as a class one. Now, once you decide lesion assessment the with the IVAS uh, and so it is uh, 2A. As you see, OCT is not for lesion assessment. They do have a OCT as a post, but three, you cannot decide the lesion because it's not clear what should be the lesion assessment, uh, the, what is the degree of stenosis on the IVAS or uh, MLA. Uh, you know, the late, the recent favor trial uh, comparing, they did a, a, on IVAS, the MLA of 3 millimeter and if it is between 3 and 4, you need a plaque burden of more than 70%. So anything between 3 to 4 millimeter square MLA uh, is considered as significant on the IVAS. So, but it still remains 2A because we don't have a long-term data on that. Uh, and uh, the second point was still, uh, that hard team approach and calculation of both STS and uh, syntax score and also use some frailty indexes like cirrhosis, frailty, malnutrition. So besides just looking at the scores, you need to take care of other uh, points also in the discussion uh, in these uh, uh, patients uh, when you present. The other important was that what improves survival and survival basically, you remember the multivessel disease and cabbage has been a prime uh, the class one indication and here it actually has been challenged quite a bit uh, largely because of various data also have come up with the PCI and no convincing that many subgroups of the cabbage really improve survival. So if you take it uh, in a simpler way, the green bar that if you have a multi-vessel CAD uh, as you can see there and, uh, and left main disease that patient is good uh, for cabbage. The second group will be Patients who have multi-vessel disease and the EF, which is in the center, less than 35%. So those are the two group now has class one indication. So there is a lot of back and forth uh, discussion in the uh, various letter to uh, the editors and so that why this downgraded of the cabbage occurred. But that I would say the real life uh, situation that because and PCI has moved up to many 2A categories, which used to be class one for the cabbage in the past. So very, very important. Um, and also, this is for basically survival. Now, for symptoms, is different. As you can see, on right on the top, you have stable disease, patient has angina. Yes, for symptom improvement, PCI, cabbage, whatever needed is can be done. Now, also, they actually had not included much in terms of various syntax grade, low, intermediate, or high. So they do mention, but the syntax really uh, high grading or so had not been part of the uh, equation. Now, this is basically the radial versus femoral approach. They're making clearly class one now, radial uh, for ACS uh, to decrease mortality uh, in uh, and vascular complication of bleeding and class one also in stable disease to decrease the vascular complication. So, this is where it comes from various trials and the IVAS because they still don't have much long term, although I think there is enough data now uh, on uh, long term IVAS decreasing mortality. But still, they are not made it to class 1. So, both IVAS as well as OCT, they made a OCT also as a 2A. So, first time OCT has come into equation and IVAS that particularly in patient with a left main or complex CAD to reduce ischemic events. 
They did not make mortality yet because you need a multi-center long-term trials to answer that question. And uh, then, of course, once patient comes back for ISR, you should do the imaging that has been emphasized further. Then from complexity point of view, they said that once you have complex disease, you need to do revascularize these patients. Wait and watch on medical therapy is not good. So this is where we come down to that your total occlusions, high syntax score, uh, patient does not qualify for one of the other criteria of the cabbage or PCI, but something should be done to this complex disease patient because awesome trial and others showed that medical therapy alone have a very high mortality. And optimum trial recently, cabbage turned down, showed that very high mortality of those patients. So something should be done to them. Uh, very, very important. Then patient with diabetes. So they did mention that patient with a multi-vessel CAD, if you have involvement of the LAD, then it's a class 1 indication. Others, is still 2A for PCI. Multi-vessel CAD, uh, PCI is, uh, became 2A, no longer uh, contraindication. And same thing for the patient with a left main or lower intermediate complexity of the CAD, the PCI is class 2B. So with that note, I think we'll have a lot of other discussion. Go back to the angiogram and let's, uh, let's hear from our faculty and uh, uh, moderators that how would they d deal with this lesion and uh, would you just go ahead and do the intervention or will modify based on the uh, imaging study knowing that this patient did not have any uh, stress test and so. I just want to ask a question before yeah. we begin, and you know, uh, yeah. See, we have a light trial, trial which showed that uh, you know when you are trying to do with the complex uh, angioplasty in stenting, even with the endoscopic ACS, they did show that uh, if you eliminate aspirin, it is not going to do any harm. Yeah. So when you have this kind of patient with aspirin is allergy, questionable allergy, do you think that it was good to use a uh, you know in the place of classical a tachycardial or? So this we actually have personal lot of experience now. Single monotherapy of presagrel or ticagrelor. Can I say it for clopidogrel? Probably not with that confidence, but I'll have no hesitation in doing a left main bifurcation intervention and discharging patient on ticagrelor or presagrel single monotherapy. His question is... Yeah. Why Pasagril? Why not uh, Ticagril based on the twilight? Yeah, no, but that's a, could be both. Answer, but yeah. remember, the one question was twilight and global freedom were one month and three months aspirin. Global freedom. Used. Yeah, no, the, nobody took out at yes. time zero. But we have the ascent trial, uh, which uh, the, where there, uh, Pasagril, aspirin was given at the time. And then they are starting the second part that no aspirin at all, right from the day one. So we do not have clear cut the twilight point of view, but with the same token that uh, taking away aspirin in these cases is completely fine, uh, in my opinion, as long as you have done the good job angiographically and particularly if you have come, you have really uh, supported by imaging. So one, any one of them, I would say I have no objection to one versus other. And uh, Anu, you did at, uh, give a press to any particular region, maybe you can answer. But I would say that any one of them, we actually are very big on Prasagur in our lab, uh, and uh, I know some uh, ISAR React 5 did favor Prasagur. We did our own experience uh, uh, in our last series of cases. Uh, we didn't find those kind of differences, which was in ISAR React 5, but, uh, but we have been uh, using Prasagur way more than Ticagrelor in our lab, particularly in patients with a stable CAD. Okay, so here, yeah. what should we, can we discuss? Yeah, let's discuss this case now. That the question is, that do we need to worry? I mean, physiologically, if we had to get, and maybe we can ask our viewers to put in the questions and their comments in the chat box, that uh, what I want to do is clearly the distal lesion of the mid to distal lesion of the LED, which is 90 plus percent. We know by various data, that will be positive FFR. But what if we take it to the D2? And whether that LED lesions, they will be significant or not. So that's where the question. Uh, what do you think? And we can ask our audience also. Yeah. So I think the LED lesion, which is, uh, you know, the distal part of the LED lesion looks very significant, but uh, the amount of area it's supplying is very limited. Yeah. So rather the diagonal looks very big at that particular place, rather than the LED main vessel, it's tapering into a very small vessel. So it looks as angiographically, the diagonal... The last diagonal looks to be much bigger than the LED, which is seen here. Yeah. We think that uh, we need to 
do any kind of intervention for the dysmos part of the lab is it going to really help yeah so okay. the very good point so uh, what uh, you basically are saying that leave on the distal led alone and just take care of the uh, proximal the, those two segments of the mid led which is supplying basically the second diagonal so we equalize you know, so right now our wire is i'm so sorry there is a little issue with the our uh, the uh, hemodynamics no we can't right? show don't move the cameras they can move the camera no, or no there's no camera yeah. that will move so, okay equalize now let's They're go done, right so this is the, yeah we are using the ffr i know a lot of people use ifr we are in our lab actually we uh, do a, a ffr or imaging guided uh, intervention in 62% of cases so that we are very big on the not much of deciding on the imaging uh, i mean not with the anatomical but uh, more physiological and of that 85% is ffr uh, and uh, about uh, Fifteen uh, percent is IFR, and IFR basically patient with asthma or patient with a valve disease, particularly aortic stenosis. Where do you want? Do not want to give uh, the adenosine. Okay, so we are going to start the drug. Yeah, if we need to, let's say, do we need to. We actually don't need to. It's already point eight. Yeah, it's a point eight, so it's significant. Point eight zero, so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we stop it. Don't start any drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is the resting of FFR. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, a resting FFR is already positive, so that LED lesion is significant. So let's discuss about pro and con or cons of this. <laughs> yeah. Huh? How did you do that? Oh, ah, the that's camera. camera. That's yeah. camera. Okay, they okay, move. Fine, Good. Fine. Okay. Now I'll uh, use run through wire. Okay. So, I'm going to pull back. Yeah. Pull back. And we are doing the pullback now. Okay, no drift. Mm. IFR definitely maybe a little more precise in terms of localizing, and FFR, but same. Uh, they actually had not mentioned uh, because of various data that post PCI physiological indices. So they are not part of the recommendation. and we know that many trials actually have looked into this aspect and uh, is still very questionable questionable in the sense uh, that no matter what you do uh, focal occurs in about 25% of cases focal uh, lesion causing uh, abnormal ifr or ffr mostly is the diffuse and so you just cannot do about it you can put more stent so 515 and the focal yes you can always optimize but uh, in the distal uh, you know with the once it is diffuse it always remains the issue So now the question is: Can we simply go through? Because remember, the lesion is there in that uh, diagonal. I mean, LED just before the di second diagonal, and then if we and that LED, yes, clearly the diagonal is bigger than LED, but still, remember that goes to the septum and supplies the apex. So if we can go easily, to me, I think it's and no no disease in the second diagonal. I think will not be wrong. Just put a stand from the distal LED to the mid. and uh, keep the diagonal whether you should a wire or not that also part of the lot of discussion whether jailing wire or not jailing the wire or balloon wire 2.5 2515 yeah two yeah. Five, yeah okay uh, no, so we were able to put a wire long the, stand, huh? one yeah. long stand one long stand versus yeah no two mm -hmm. stand one ac across no, the no, second diagonal and one proximally okay at that time we had to do the lesion in the d1 yes All right, guys. Keep telling us uh, what else you will do differently, or uh, any points of discussion, or any other questions by our audience. So let's find out. Maybe a chat uh, box. We can ask our uh, audience that would they take care of the distal LED or leave it alone and just take care of the uh, mid LED to the second diagonal? Right. I think that's a good question to ask. Okay, this is a two point five fifteen balloon. Yes. Okay. Okay, going up. Go. Okay, down. Mm. Good. In the end, you want to do some imaging. Down. Yeah, it's no. a move moving. Fifteen yeah. always. Means no, no, not you, not moving. 
angle. Still calcium there. Yeah. There's okay. calcium even in the medial AD. If you see that, it's a speck yeah. so of calcium. So you want to do uh, I was ready? Get the no, I was ready. No, no, no. If the calcium no. they said, we no, can look yet. into it. No. Uh, uh, yeah. What do you think? You think it's a calcified lesion? No. We're doing uh, image. Huh? No imaging. I'm sorry, we're, what? We're not doing imaging. That's okay. Okay. Okay, take a picture. Okay. No, no. Don't open. Kiss, kiss. Yeah. No. Okay, said no. Yeah, there is another lesion very distal with a bridge. Yeah, so that can be left alone. Yeah. It's opened up. Yeah. And LED is good size. Look at that now, right? So glad that we made a decision for about that. So let's do one stand there. And then we do a second stand in the... Okay. What stand do you want? Two, five? Use a promise other earlier the so synergy or promise, whichever way you want. Yeah, okay. You want to put a 28 2.5 24? No, 24 24. And Are then you leaving a gap? Yeah. No, no gap, and then you put a 3.5 in the mean. Hmm. Okay, 2524. Yeah, yep. Now, would you protect the second diagonal? Right, that's a big question. Would you wire the second diagonal? I think it's better to actually protect this, although there doesn't look any disease at the... Yeah, still there is no disease. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of people will... The data we recently presented, we have just paper in Jack Intervention, uh, the side wiring of the jail, you know, jail side branch, the wiring or side branch protection. And overall message was that it does not make difference unless your side branch was more than 70% or 65% involved. So like this particular case, overall, if you take all the cases together, it was no difference. So it was only if a lesion was more than 10 millimeter, as well as it's more than 60% obstruction uh, of the side branch, then wiring the side branch will be uh, was beneficial. But otherwise, as a group, was not different. How about the angle that it's taking up? If the angle is very, you know... Uh, yeah, acute. actually, you know what? In that oh, study... Uh, huh? yeah. Ang back, angle did not, yeah. Yeah, did not make a difference. You need to pull back. I'll go back. Hold on. Okay. Huh? Now you're good. You're good? Because we cannot be overlapping at the diagonal level. Yeah, yeah. It's good now. No? You have to bring one millimeter back. Because okay. remember, promise the stent starts inside the dot. So I wanted 28. Okay. Good. We're okay. going up. Okay. You want to see again? Okay, go. Okay, go up. It's a 2.5, a 24 uh, promise elite. Yep. Go up again. So both we use a promise and a synergy. Down. Quite a bit. So use your last time two promo assistants compared to synergy. You want to tell uh, our audience that why? A lot of people here. Let's dilate this area with the okay. balloon now. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Good. Okay. Guide okay. is sucking in, so make because sure guide is out. Because significant disease. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go up. And with the second one, we are going to wire the diagonal because diagonal there is a gap. There is no osteal involvement. So we can just put a separate stent. You can go a little higher pressure there. 18, 20, good. You want to stand D1? Yeah, so we do a... 2 or 12? Balloon. And a then we balloon. put a 2, 2, 2 5, 16. Get a 2.25 cutting balloon. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, we are taking a picture now. Okay, looks good. good. He wants a cutting balloon. Why I said there's nothing there, it's not hmm. in the ostium. Yeah, that's fine. Two or two point two five cutting balloon. Now you just ought to get a high pressure, that's fine. You can get a high pressure balloon. Which size? Two to two point two five. 12 high pressure balloon. Yes. So we are going to wire the diagonal now. D1. 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 Not the D2. D2 remain good. Look at that. Everybody agrees? Like D2 still remain fine. 
well open actually no no yeah. issues. no issues at all uh, and uh, the question will come that the d1 since the ostial involvement is not there you let's keep it away from the ostium rather than doing a mini crush or so and there also you can come just there at the ostium uh, at the uh, for the main led stent you may not need to go uh, across all this need to go across that's not a issue also now what do you like to do what would you do being there you across or just at the distal edge which one for the mid led yeah. no i think we not across yeah we'll okay. give yeah so that's where we'll put a 30 yeah 28 yeah yeah the 32 will be no, covered 28 28 28 or even 24 but anyway 28 30. okay oh. so we are going to the diagonal now that it's a fielder one eh? that's why i wanted 28 here then short that side see there mm. anyway we'll go to d1 So any uh, our Flora question? Failed. Yeah. Any our questions uh, by our colleagues? Okay, good. Or any our audience? Do you want to pre-dilate the diagonal lesion after putting yeah, the? Yeah, I think so, because there is a ninety percent lesion, eighty-five, ninety percent. So we have a two oh two point two five twelve balloon. Die. And then we'll put a, a promus distal sure, to the ostium. Let's get the balloon. Yeah. Now, what is the COVID situation in India? They were like used to be seven, eight hundred cases. Now they're creeping up to around four thousand per day. In Delhi, as particularly, the number of cases are increasing, and but in rest of India, not many cases are reported. Uh, but fortunately, so far there is only positivity that is being seen, but no hospitalization. Ah. Yeah, here you are kind of constant about... Uh... Okay, Good. go up here. So you want to put a 225-16 stand? Okay. Okay, down. You have to pull back 2 millimeter. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Looks like a spot legion though, right? Yeah. Okay. Open. And also get us a 3 o 28. Promise. Yeah, so we are going to stent the diagonal separately first. Stay away from the ostium, a millimeter away from the ostium of the diagonal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is the 2.5, 16. 2 to 5. 2 to 5. Yeah. 2.25, 16. 16 promus. Like to shoot it and see how the result is of ballooning. I mean, optimal extension of the okay. impact. We can show it. Just one second. Yeah. We'll just show the floor one second. Let's see. How was the result? Can you, you okay. die properly? That's okay. Good. That's reasonable. I mean, it opened up. A young guy. I mean, even if it looks good. Now, here, the based on the data, since it's a small vessel, if you have a drug-coated balloon, could be okay. But as you know that we don't have a DCB in uh, okay. United States. Going up. Yeah. So this is the kind of case. PTC alone is not enough. If you want to do it, you do a drug-coated balloon. What would you do? Would you put a stent or drug-coated balloon or just PTC only? No. In general, we prefer to actually stent uh, if it's, if it's about 2.25 and above. Uh -huh. The problem is when you do a drug balloon, if we unfortunately die, there is a problem. Again, you would end up doing something. We have the LED strand. Good. Good. Yes. Good. Right? Good Hold on. Yeah. We are going to. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. 3 or 28. 28 is good. 
So now we need to do. We have to kill some time. Do the eyewash in the end. Put up, put the app yes, slide. A lot of time. No need. And talk about some app or something then. Yeah, but you have the wrong slides there. No, huh? But tell them to get the slide. Put this one up. What I need to be done, I just put uh, the guideline slide. If you had to be, tell somebody to go. We have some time. So we use that way. So we have at least 15 minutes. Can you tell Andrew bring the app slides update or something? Yeah, so we are going now. If Andrew is listening, can he come down with the app slides? And we'll then uh, have some time. So we'll discuss about various new innovative with new apps, which are quite a bit uh, become very popular right present. Helping out in various issues. Good. Vision is very tachycardic. What's happening? We are across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, get the guide in. I know 24. <coughs> no, what? Floor only. Let's see. Right. Be across. No, but it cannot be across, right? You need to go a little distal. No, cannot. Go in. But you can have a distal room. Okay. Yeah. That's too much. So we have a one millimeter at the level of the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Pull back and go back again. Yeah. It's not uh, good. allowing. Okay, good. good. Now we're Many times when there is a little trouble, you pull back and go with the speed. Okay, now diagonal. And we want to go after the diagonal. Okay, what is the pulse rate on this one? Can't even see. Yes. Huh? Take a picture. Yeah. 92. Give 2.5 IV low pressure. Always keep a pulse rate 70 during PCI. This is very good. Mm. Remember, it's after the dot. Actually, fit in very nicely 28 millimeter. Okay. Stop. And then you can go a little bit distal. 16 atmosphere. Okay, down. They like to see I was, I'm telling you. They look good. Go 2 millimeter in. Go 2 millimeter in. Good. Good, good, good. You didn't take the beta blocker this morning. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. What do you want to do? Post dilate? I think the mid dilate okay. is definitely with the 3.25 to 15 balloon. So here is that a lot of the question is do you do an image or you just do an angiographic guided? Uh, intervention uh, 3.25 and uh, just to optimize your results so that actually is the part of many other trials which are ongoing um, and whether OCT or IWAS uh, involvement uh, here we are just going to go high pressure would you image now in the end or OCT or IWAS uh, you generally go ahead with I, I, uh, OCT after implantation just to see whether we have, you know, optimally opposed the stent or not, and also whether we have landed in the distally into any kind of soft lake or in distal section is there. So normally we do at this moment uh, some kind of uh, IVERS and uh, R, maybe we're sitting and then see our result. Whether it's correct no, we don't ask what percent they do. What percent of your uh, cases you do imaging? We are almost doing about 70% of the cases uh, imaging uh, OCT in our lab. So more for optimization? Optimization. Good. Yeah. Also, uh, sometimes when we have a problem of, uh, you know, diffuse disease, and also when you have it, uh, you know, the, the, the size of the vessels, we are trying to see the OCD and uh, to approximately know the, what is the size of the vessel and uh, thereby looking at the size of the stand that we are using. And go two millimeter further. No. Okay. So We're this good. is a three point uh, two five. 2, 5, uh, 15, go 2 millimeter more. Yeah, here. That's it. Okay. Very good. Okay. Done. 
Dr. Sharma, do you use the uh, you know, stand boost in your lab? Uh, do... Yeah, we can use it. Put this one. Let's do the bo boost. Bring <laughs> it. No, just put it there. Yeah. We're going to use a stand boost. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Good. We have it. So we don't use much stand boost largely because of uh, the radiation. Oh. But are we okay now? Yeah. Good. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Go. That's good. Okay. This is not there, Pablo. Okay, good. Actually, it looks very nice uh, yeah. on the stand boost. All the stand boost you see it on different side. Can they get a sun boost on the? No, no, they can't see it. They cannot, yeah. Okay, let's take a picture. We pull back. Get a Vera Pemil also. Take yeah. a picture, yeah. Good. Give me Vera Pemil. Andrew, want to just connect there? Yeah, good. And pull back the wire, yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think now? Very nice result, actually. Um, yeah, and the diagonal ostium remained the same, uh, no yeah. problem, mild 10-20%, uh, D2 is, com D1, I mean, uh, D2 is completely fine, and... Uh, is it slow for the D1? Um, I don't know, I just saw that here in the room, must be... You want to go to, we can go to some different view to see the ostium, good. Let me take a picture here. We can go to a uh, caudal, LAO yeah. caudal, LAO caudal showed it well. Good, okay, screen down, go to LAO caudal. Andrew is there. No, you need a little more cord. Okay, there. Yeah. Okay, center. Perfectly fine. See that? Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Talking, let me see what yeah. it is. Yeah, so key is that uh, basically we have seen optimized it uh, whether you want to do now the imaging. Uh, and so, I mean, again, a lot of people will to, to high, very high in imaging. Um, and uh, so, we actually have our lab is always in the single digits in terms of imaging, and that to majority being the IVAS and some cases OCT. But we had a lot of OCT guided trials, uh, particularly yellow and so, uh, which is ongoing at present, even just completed actually, 130 plus cases, uh, having a OCT, uh, IVAS all combined, uh, and uh, of course combining with the, our physiology. So we do a, quite a bit of physiological cases, uh, guided pre, not post pre. This case was clear cut because of such a tight lesion uh, in the uh, LED uh, distally, move this camera up and yeah, so they can put that camera, yeah, good. So, so in this particular case, uh, it was clear cut case for off was of the, as you can see, the angiogram point of view, very high pressure and nicely expanded. So, E, if what will be the region or what are the chances here further, you want to go ahead and do a more high pressure dilatation or do imaging, which will change. So, we know that once you do imaging, you do more uh, equipment will be needed. Uh, and if you are good trained with your IVAS, uh, your kind of angiographic eyes, the short term data like uh, I lumen 3 showed the minimum extent expansion was equivalent in the OCT guided versus angiographic guided. But OCT will pick up some more dissection and so. So that's for short. So with that note, uh, this is where we are. And now we wanted to just show Dr. Keeney another new app features which we have developed 
uh, to help our uh, interventional uh, interventionists on uh, uh, the new development. Everybody has seen our uh, bifurcate, octate, and uh, the calcificate, uh, and so. But now we have added uh, new features, particularly from learning point of view, to all our viewers and learning more of the complication. People always say we learn more from the complications. Uh, then the teaching of the guide wire, which guide wire to select. So, Anu? and uh, air karma of 0.9 yeah where is the so can we yeah show those uh, they're going to now uh, any questions from the audience on the chat we good very bad hmm. yeah okay good So this is uh, the our original app actually was uh, the bifurcate, which was an uh, illustration. Then uh, there was a lot of demand saying that can we do some animation and understand the various techniques. So most of these apps you can see them on uh, cardiologyapps.com. If you go to the website, you will see them, and then you are able to download by using uh, uh, either on the Google Play or uh, Cardiology Apps. So, how does bifurcate 3D work? So, this is how the website is. So, on the website, well, if you don't want to download it uh, because um, on your phone, you can check on the website. So, it goes as left main, non-left main by intervention. And then we also have some key important uh, videos that we want to show that would be there. Select the key videos. That is how it will uh, look like that if you want to go, this uh, on the top is... Uh, the animation that we would like to uh, show. Uh, this is how the animation it is for a non-left uh, main mini crush technique there. So if you see that these key videos can be just downloaded, can be uh, used to understand, can be used for teaching purposes, lectures, any of those kinds. Um, and you see side by side for every step, at the same time we tell you uh, what are the key features, how to do each step. Um, at a given time. This is the animation we have. This uh, is the same thing again that if you are uh, choosing any technique we are saying wire both main vessel side branch and whenever there is a side branch and this is the discussion we had even in this case that do we use a regular balloon or do you want to use a atheratomy if there is osteal involvement always try to use a atheratomy balloon and then you know how, how you place a stent wire comes out then this is how you're doing the main vessel stent recross and do the final kissing we are actually are a proponent of uh, no uh, you know a proximal optimization in the non left main left main we know definitely you have to do a optimization so if we are unable to you know go into the side branch see that we wired it but not able to go with the balloon we are showing how you can do what is called as a anchor balloon technique this is an anchor balloon technique that you go distal to the side branch that you dilate the balloon and then the side branch balloon will go uh, forward so this is uh, wow, everything has been shown these are the other cardiology apps that are available just to tell you how they came out and when the first one was I just mentioned illustration by Farcade, uh, which was came out in September 2017 for imaging guidance which actually is a OCT uh, we called as a octade uh, what we have there uh, is a interpretation of all the OCT images and then we also have a quiz of a 60 question we keep up updating we have uh, 16 uh, OCT cases and we'll be adding another uh, 5 to 6 cases uh, um, uh, this month itself. Then we came up with transeptate to understand since uh, you know we have to do transeptal uh, the, in a, a particular way just to do so many structural procedure whether you are doing a mitral clip or we are doing a left atrial appendage closure and all these things where we, we know exact uh, place where the transeptal has to be done. Tower cathode was an app to say how we will re-engage after the uh, tower valve has been done because that was a new challenge to the interventional uh, uh, attendings and us 
is engagement of the coronaries after uh, having a tower procedure because we are uh, now doing tower procedure in the intermediate and low risk patients who are younger and we will be seeing them um, you know with the years to come uh, with some kind of coronary uh, uh, presentation whether it's acute coronary syndrome or even if it is sta stable angina calcificate came out in 2019 management of calcific lesion we are going to um, come up with a second version because we have to will be adding ivl shortly uh, for the calcificate now complicate is not uh, it's a web app where we have over 59 cases of all the complications that uh, we see in the cath lab so we have over 800 angiograms that we have discussed case by case or various complication that we see and we describe each case show the angiogram and management of each of this uh, complication bifurcate 3d is something i just showed you and a guide wire was the one that just came out in november last year this is a description of over 150 coronary guide wires micro catheters and um, we have uh, cases or 25 cases saying uh, uh, you know which wire to be used for which particular case um, we have, i'm going to is ready okay we just give me one minute he's going to upload the guide wire uh, why this is important is it says there's a nice robust search function uh, on this that you can use it uh, on the app or on the website and, and uh, there's a library that we have created of the various coronary wires so people understand the property of each wire so they know based on the property which wire to be used where this is especially very important if you are doing a cto to understand uh, which are the initial wires the subsequent wires uh, what wire to be used for uh, recrossing uh, through the you know dissection and all these things is ready yeah. okay good. good so this is the guide wire app app and i also all of them have app as well as a website except for uh, uh, you know the last three four ones this has a website because the library is uh, huge and uh, many people will say they don't want their uh, um, uh, you know it, uh, to have to carry this on their phone but many people would like to have it on the phone and uh, also what we all these apps are such that you don't need an internet connection that um, you'll be able to easily see them without any of them so cto and non cto so just going to show you if it's a cto how we will go through various uh, of these wires lesion based also we go through and then calcific uh, lesion that we have properties of the each wire now these are the various cases where i just mentioned you can go learn through the cases and this is uh, the wire library where you have a nice uh, search function you want to search a particular wire and understand what is the property of the wire and where that wire should be used you go to the search function put the uh, wire uh, name you will immediately be able to see that uh, uh, wire this is just to show you the fighter wire we are made by a different kind of a various companies so you can search based on the company search based on the wire these are the micro catheters the various micro catheters that are available that you can go through them this is just another example of i think uh, non cto lesion morphology so what we are trying to say is based on the lesion morphology also you can decide which wire you want to use brief description of the property of the wires that are important how to use them in a particular uh, calcific lesion yeah any, uh, any questions, questions about uh, so this is wiring particularly there is not much teaching on the wires and this uh, the wire uh, app it will be a guide wire app is really tremendous uh, and rapid quite a bit of download uh, because nobody you have the download yeah we have uh, the, i can uh, the highest downloads is uh, in america next uh, next download is in india india <laughs> highest download is from uh, india because of our teaching and i think uh, thank you to all the followers we have who you know uh, follow us on the ccc live cases learn from our uh, web based series as well as uh, these uh, apps yeah uh, thank you very much, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Sh Sharma and Anupuna Kini for a wonderful demonstration of an excellent case.
And I'll thank you very much for uh, uh, also because it's going to be extremely useful for those people who are actually learning and also doing routinely these cases because many of us actually may not have exposed to many of the kinds of wires that are available uh, in the market. And uh, it's really useful to actually choose the right kind of wire in the right situation. And that's really is useful. And uh, I'm glad that you have put up in the, you know, in for this kind of app, which is extremely useful for not only for those people who are already doing these uh, things routinely, but also for those learners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions, final comments? And before uh, we uh, complete our live transmission, and I'll go up to my room and you start your case discussion, and I'll join you in uh, two, three minutes. Okay. If there's no more questions, thank you very much, and I'll see you shortly.